human being that I, I really enjoy uh, enjoyed his YouTube channel. Uh, everybody, give some love to Josh Knight Music. There he is, everybody. Say hi. There he is. Hey, 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 Josh. Thank you so much for coming on, man. Thank you for being patient over there. Thank you for, uh, you know, even wanting to do this after having to bear witness to my uh, my gold digging expedition. Uh, so I appreciate not. that. Of course. Of course, of course. Oh, no, I'm kidding. You know, it's actually, it's funny. <laughs> thank you, Bonnie. Thank you so much for those biddies. I appreciate it. I didn't even see it, man. You lucked out. You lucked out. Uh, oh, okay. Good, good. Well, you should have just, you should have just went with it, man. You should be like, dude, I was about to leave. I was like, what kind of... I, I, the, the thing was, I was like, maybe this, I don't know what's going on in this guy's life. He might <laughs> need just a little grain of remorse. So I'll give him this. <laughs> Redemption, baby. Redemption. That is a... That, yeah, but but please. you did show us after all, so... I've got a good look at what it might have looked like. Uh, see, and then there it is. It, it's like, it's like I, uh, it's like I have to take it to the next level. It's like it wasn't bad enough that you had to. Well, you didn't even see it, but it's not bad enough that I was sitting here like, meh, meh, meh. yeah. But then yeah. I had to like literally, I mean, to the point where sure. I had to go wash my hands, or else my wife would have been like, dude, we hey, should. Man, you get deep, like you said. It's a dirty business. <laughs> it's a dirty business. It's a dirty <laughs> business. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, but but redemption, yes, but there is redemption. You know, I, I feel like that's something that uh, that we're, we're missing in today's world. I mean, it, it, especially here in the states, but you know, around the world, is this idea of redemption. We pre we pick nose good. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right, Wooby. Uh, I'm gonna stop looking at the chat for a second so I can have a conversation. Um, I don't know the idea of redemption. It seems like it's sort of off the table, and to even talk about anybody who's sort of been canceled or anything, mm -hmm. if you even talk about it, it, could lead to you you yourself being canceled and such. I guess we're just jumping right into cancel culture. I, that's where my brain went. You said redemption, so yeah, yeah, no, I got it. It's it makes sense. It, cancel culture is like. It's a phenomenon where um, a lot of people want to be like the first, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Or like they want to like, they see something is cool and then they want to jump on the trend, you know what I'm saying? So it's not even maybe necessarily that they have a, a moral obligation to be like, oh yes, this person's character is iffy. They're just like, oh, everyone's doing it. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yes, I don't it's know. It's become like, a, like signaling that you are on board with this very superior yeah, yeah, yeah. moral high ground right and that exactly. you are a part of this club and that you shall never be canceled because i am here with you i am an ally through mm. twitter and facebook but that's where it stopped because I, you ain't gonna see my ass out in the street that's not me but i'm saying <laughs> but that's where it stops for most people is like i'm not yeah. you know, like i'm i'm a i'm a twitter revolutionary i, I love that I love the Twitter revolutionaries. Yes, Twitter revolutionaries, like a thumb warrior or something like that. Thumb warrior. Then, you know, it's like it's like nobody nobody goes deeper. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. nobody wants to go deeper. Right. And I agree. There are certain situations and certain people who may need to uh, face repercussions for their action. Yeah. Which may lead to less engagement slash business from people. Or in, or incarceration. <laughs> yes, or incarceration, depending on you know you know. There's yes, a, there's a there's spectrum. A... <laughs> yeah, a myriad of different <laughs> things people could do to get canceled. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But then, like you said, like it's, it's like, all right. But then, where is the line of like popularism? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just popular to do this. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then, the other extreme is going back to find shit that people did in the past yeah. when they're totally different now. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you listen to the, do you listen to, well, do you listen to the Joe Bun podcast? The Joe, oh, oh, I, no, I, I don't, but I have, see, I have watched some stuff because he's on, he's pretty mm -hmm. popular on YouTube and I, I like, I like his disposition, but I've never sat yeah. there and been, I've never been a returner and I, I actually mm -hmm. forgot about them. I actually, he's been suggested a lot. So I, I do want to listen. Yeah. I like him um, because, well, he's a human, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think the mo the thing about him is like, He's just, he's a human. You can see him for like who he is, his flaws and everything. Right. And, and he, he was, certain. he's a conservative, to give people context, he's a conservative um, uh, talking head or, um, or YouTuber or alternative media. 
Correct. He's like a so he he's a rapper. He was a, he's an ex. He says he's an ex rapper, but now he's just like a a media like mogul guy. He's like forming his own network of like you know talking about the culture and things like that. Mm -hmm. But people see that's the thing though. See once you watch him, that's the thing with the clips. It's very like, oh, this is him. But then goes back to the cancel culture thing. People like to take clips or whatever and just use that and form that. But if you go deeper, you see who people really are like he's a he's a dad you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying he's not very conservative at all really oh, okay, that's okay. exactly he's got some uh conservative he's got like one or two conservative people like on the podcast with him and they're just not necessarily conservative but conservative minded in certain ways you well know i thought that he is, was also someone who voted for trump and he was sort of a, a no, no. okay no. then maybe See, I have the wait, so joe Biden, he's a he's a black dude right yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah. see that's the wait, thing you okay. see like People gotta dive deeper. He, no, yeah, no, he's, he's no. And, and here's the thing: I don't write people off for being for voting for Trump. So either way, right, right, right. I wouldn't have cared. I actually, mm -hmm. I actually have found some solace in like conservative alternative media. So like, of there course. is some, there is something. But please continue. I, I got everything wrong. No, but I, it's I bring him up because I think he's a quintessential example of, quote unquote cancel culture or misappropriate or like misinterpretation culture or whatever mm -hmm. that is you know what i'm saying um because he he bring he brings it up a lot like because he's done a lot of like messed up stuff mm -hmm. not messed up but just like things that a young kid in the rap game who's you know maybe may or may not be struggling with you know <laughs> use problems right might do you know what i'm saying so and then people take that and they form like all the forward opinions you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying and you know i just use him as an example you know right. what i'm saying uh he's just one person that i see is in it a lot and like just things from his past always come up and things and he's a completely different person now and i say that to say like um just like you had uh a certain viewpoint of him because of the limited um amount of depth of perception you had of him right so do other people you know on twitter or instagram who choose to do the same with other people they choose to quote unquote cancel you know what i'm right. saying yeah yeah it's like uh it's like you did one thing in your early 20s and you said something stupid or you posted something stupid on facebook and now that's your whole life and that's who you are yeah. forever it's like you yeah. said some like misogynistic thing about about yeah. white women back in the day and now all the karens are mad yeah. you know it's like it's it, exactly it's 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 it's, it's a really it's it's really strange and that's something that i fear because i know that i've said some stupid stuff this this podcast is six years old in the early days i had my friends on oh, we were all saying crap, stupid though. shit you know like it was just yeah. it was especially at the beginning when you don't think anyone's listening and you're just like mm -hmm. whatever we're just gonna say whatever because they're telling us not to say it it's not like i was sitting mm -hmm. there saying just like awful stupid things just to be that person mm -hmm. but when right. you're talking like this and you're talking for a long time people ideas and and things just get said and, and and i've gotten much better at not just saying stupid shit but still mm -hmm. that things that sort of things happen mistakes are made or or people interpret things you say as a mistake you know it's like you might have said or they take things out of context like like right. like with joe it's like maybe i saw a clip where he's saying something positive about donald trump where he's just being mm -hmm. rational about the situation and not just being like mm -hmm. he's terrible on all levels he should be in hell you know it's like mm -hmm. it's like hey he's still our president and there's still mm -hmm. like there there's this there's this balance that people are not even trying to take this where mm -hmm. nuance you know we're, we're trying to nuance. understand a situation and and, and and it's either it's either that way or this way and if you're anywhere mm -hmm. in between it's like well you're against us <laughs> so mm -hmm. so cancel mm -hmm. um, yeah yeah I, I don't know I, agree. I, I, I actually do want to check out Joe now now that we're talking about it because um, like I said, I thought he was uh, a conservative. He was a, I thought he was a dude who voted for Trump and was like, uh, because what was really interesting and, and I have a, a good amount of friends uh, that are black and Mexican and, yeah. and, you know, and not white, uh, that, that were like, we're voting for Trump. Like, because yeah. we're sick of, we were sick. There was, I got different answers from different people, but, um, yeah. I don't know when you, when you look at these numbers when you look at how many more people showed up uh people of color showed up for trump in this election uh, yeah. and then he has this thing where he's just this racist asshole 
and that's mm-hmm. all he is. And and mm-hmm. and I, I do think that he had he had definitely fanned the flames of a lot of shit. Um, mm-hmm. But but it, it it's just interesting to see that to see you know more people of color sort of banding together to try to get this mm-hmm. dude back in for four more years. Um, yeah, I don't know. How do you how do you look at that? How does that how does that fall I, on you? I you know it's I to be honest. It is a little bit confusing, but I can see where people are coming from, mm. you know what I'm saying? Because it is all a matter of your circumstance, mm. you know what I'm saying? Race, and then there's also circumstance, you know what I'm saying? There are, of course, maybe the front side is like, or what you first, like, oh, don't you see what he's doing um, to people who look like you? Yes, that's one stance, but then again, nuance. Mm-hmm. Uh, they may be being like, okay, yes, but I don't really care about that so much. I care so much about the safety of, you know, the people that I have here. You know what I'm saying? For and, instance. And I care about my wallet and my bank account. Mm-hmm. And like, I care about my wallet and bank account. And, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's where, again, like it's nuance. People don't want to acknowledge nuance. Yeah. Me saying that nice, somebody, how can you say that? Well, because I, I can see nuance. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that I agree with their stance or whatever, but I can see where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. I can see that they have, for one reason or another, they're not putting so much emphasis on, I guess, moralistically what's going on. And they see things more pragmatic as like safety and wallet like i like you said and and maybe a myriad of other reasons that i mm-hmm. can't even think of right well, now. like conservative issues religion like i know mm-hmm. some mexicans and religion like, religion and exactly mexicans religion's is the big one i think yeah. that's the big one yeah yeah because because i mean yeah. even in black community in the in the mexican community i know i can speak for the mexican community is very you know uh rich in the catholic conservative you know they're not into the abortion thing you know they're not into a lot of these things that tend to come from a liberal or left stance. Yeah. So they so a lot of people can will actually look at it and be like, well then this is like I, I see that he says these dumb Oh my gosh. Thank you, Kale, so much for that host. I appreciate that. Is that really loud for you, Ed? Is was that crazy? Uh, it was it was a little bit not too much just only because I didn't expect it. Oh yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Gosh. There's gonna be some We're of We're being invaded. <laughs> Kale, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, it, it's a. Uh, it, I don't I, my when I, when I uh, look at my friend, like, cause my co- old co-host who's Mexican, he's black Mexican and Filipino, right? So he has this whole mm-hmm. trifecta going on here, and he's like mm-hmm. the most staunch Trump supporter ever. And mm-hmm. I really like talking to him because he has an opposite view of me, and and mm-hmm. and he definitely uses his 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 melanin as as a mm-hmm. weapon against being like, mm-hmm. how can Trump be racist? I support him. So right, 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 it's right, like right. so so where how does that work? How does you know like how do, how do you see that? How do you see how people can sort of rationalize mm-hmm. these things, um, the these sort of uh, opposite ideas? Like I say, um, parts of it are confusing to me, right? And then the other parts are just. The way somebody also just like carries themselves as well too. You know what I'm saying? Like I do. Yeah. There's no, you really can't really put a paint like a finger on it. It's just like I like LeBron James. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's just that's just a general. It's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like uh, just kind of. You know what I'm saying? That's like the way it is. Like and the way that Trump kind of came in is very like impactful. It hasn't been done before. So subconsciously that stays and lingers with people. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? so they might not even be able to fully put a finger on it like your friend for instance and i'm not gonna say that trump is flat out racist right but like at the same time you can see that there are instances where he wouldn't fully acknowledge discrepancies Mm -hmm. so that's like a kind of a slap in the the face for people on the hurt end Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it's very easy to acknowledge and the fact that it was hard for that for him to acknowledge is is the like the like i said the i'm not saying he's racist but that's the uh that's the uh little like like kick in the side kind of thing yeah and so for people on the other side like how can he be racist i support him all right but also like i said the underlying side is some people just like people for yeah. whatever reason you right. know what i'm saying like you, you <laughs> some people are fans of like 
people that shouldn't necessarily like people have diff, like, like let me say for instance um uh what's his name i'm blanking on his name right now uh he's like a he's a talking talking head to he got his show got like canceled a lot um alex jones yes yes alex jones and he's got a wide range of followers mm-hmm. and everything and some people might just like him for the things that he says mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and, and regardless of whatever you know his political stances or whatever you know what i'm saying right he might have a liberal a liberal audience and a conservative audience but they just like him for what he says and do you want, do you want to, no, no 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 please please keep going but like i said it's kind of the same thing for anybody and trump is just the, the figurehead here like this is just the weird anomaly in um history where it just happens to be a president at this time he could have been a boxer right. you know what i'm saying he could have he could have been anybody else, but he's just he's the president right now. Or you know a pundit, a news pundit. Or he could have been a news pundit. Right. You know what and, I'm saying? and those and those people can have a serious influence on how people react as well. I think uh, exactly. I think a, a big part of all this of, of, of this division is that we we're having um that the media is sort of seen like this cash cow and mm-hmm. and dissent creates clicks, it creates mm-hmm. people's interest. Um, before Trump came to office, all MSNBC, you know, Fox News, all these people were fledgling, like they terrible at ratings. As soon as Trump came mm-hmm. in, oh boy, it was a cash yeah. cow for everybody, and yeah. they they used it. And and the thing about Trump being racist is like uh, he his the way that he manipulates and, and the way he uses his verbiage to manipulate reactions. That is by that is done on purpose. He's not an idiot. People yeah, think he's stupid. Yeah. He knows what yeah. he's doing. He knows what he's doing when he's when he's doing that. He's fanning the flames, and mm-hmm. and, and it blew up in his face. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and at the end it blew up in his face. But also we also have this um, this <clears throat> this culture that's being fed by this media machine that sort of is profiting off of our descent. They're profiting yeah. off of representation. Mm-hmm. They're profiting yeah. off of all these things. And, mm-hmm. and 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 not just little money, not just we're not talking little dollars and cents here, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and who else is profiting? Uh, who also profits from dissent is Facebook, Instagram, mm-hmm. all these face, all these companies who yeah. who who sort of enforce these narratives. And so mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of these narratives about racism and, and race, and, and not I'm not saying there's no racism in in, in America because. I've seen it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm in an interracial yeah. relationship. I yeah. know what the fuck yeah. goes on, okay? Mm-hmm. But it's not mm-hmm. but but the the magnitude and the seriousness and and yeah. even when you were seeing like the BLM protests slash riots yeah. in some cases, uh I won't I don't want to say everybody was protest or everyone was rioting because they weren't. But when yeah. even when you saw yeah. the coverage of this, it was like it's right. o- it's okay for them to be out in the streets spreading in a time of a pandemic. It's okay for them. And in fact, they need to do it more. I don't ever, mm-hmm. like, they are actually news pundits who are like, we need more of the riot. We need more of this. We need more people in the street. Yeah. And feeding this frenzy that sort mm-hmm. of carried over, and this is an unpopular thing to say, but that I- idea, like, where, where these cities are backing down and letting people just run up in it, like Seattle and Portland, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. you know, that translated to Washington, D.C. I mean, there's mm-hmm. even... They, Never they, even thought about that. It's translating this idea of they stood down because they didn't want to be held accountable like so many police officers, so many mayors, so many people are being <laughs> taken to the task. And mm-hmm. and they, for political reasons, were sort of uh, uh, letting people just like, well, don't be too hard on these people who are trying to come into our capital mm-hmm. and murder people and shit. And yeah. and and it was so disgusting to see people them just opening up the gates, you know, just mm-hmm. letting people in. And it, mm-hmm. it, I I it, and it was because of this sort of this echo of from last year where we're just sort of feeding this frenzy and again i don't want anybody to sit here and think i'm i'm i don't think there's anything wrong in this country and i don't think that there's racism exists i'm not that person you know i am not mm-hmm. that person at all but mm-hmm. i know that i know when i'm starting to see things a little bit um ex- not exaggerated i see i'm trying to talk carefully because i don't want no, no, no. i don't want to take away from like george floyd death like you know, yes. i don't want to take away from anybody who suffers from this kind of stuff mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But I do see... Can I say something? Oh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just, like, no, no, no. I, at you. It's good because it's on your same point because I just had a, this, like, same conversation with um, with my buddy over at Let's Do Humans podcast. He, we, we were talking about the same thing, and I, he, and I brought up the same point. He asked me, because he's in he's in um he's in london he's in britain he's in the uk and so he's getting the outside perspective and he was asking my american perspective and i said basically what you're saying i was like everything is real all this um racial disparity and like all, all the pr- pr- police brutality it's real but then again like i said there's on top of that like you said the media is very good at profiting off of it mm-hmm. so then on top of that there is a slight you know i guess we, i don't know want to use the word exaggeration but there is a there is an over you know exploitation of the yeah. um of the you know of the hurt yeah that's all you know and, and then they like you said they use it for profit or whatever gains you know what i'm saying sometimes it's for profit sometimes it's just for leverage so it's for everything's actually for profit you know what i'm saying everything's for power and profit exactly that's that's all it is at the end of the day right yeah from from even even like uh <laughs> You know, like when people are pandering, like like Joe Biden when he was pandering so bad, and like I don't know if I don't know how much you paid attention to all this, but when he was on on with Charlemagne, which I okay okay I'm about to bring up Charlemagne. I was just like, how are people okay with this guy? <laughs> like this guy is clearly like, first of all, he's clearly doddering off into to the ether in his mind. He's he's clearly like glassy eyed, and not all there. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, and, and like he was like making blatantly just horrifying oh, yeah. statements and it's yeah. just like are you this is who we're rallying behind like i it was just very it's very obvious that he was pandering it was very obvious mm-hmm. that he it, like even when when um uh when hillary clinton was like yeah it, it, same situation i think it was yeah. charlemagne i carry hot sauce everywhere it's like ugh. You are using this t- for political gain, and it's gross. And I don't, I don't know if they actually feel this way. I don't know if they actually mm-hmm. support it, and that's a problem. I don't really know how these people feel. I don't really know because all I'm seeing is that they're capitalizing on a movement. And it was really interesting mm-hmm. how quickly Joe Biden started pushing himself away from the the protest once it started getting a little bit out of hand, and he started mm-hmm. being like, "Oh wait, wait, no, oh, no, I don't support mm-hmm. that," you know, like. Mm-hmm. We saw a lot of backstepping, and I, I just, I, I, I have a big mistrust for anybody who is being supported, any candidates that are being supported by, by Wall Street, and, and you know, mm-hmm. like they, 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 those people will, will sell their mom to, to make a dollar. You know, what I mean, they'll sell yeah. their firstborn child to make a penny. Yeah, and they don't care. No, they don't care. Mm-hmm. It's all about the, it's dollar dollar bill, y'all. So it's like, mm-hmm. we're. It, it, it's all being sort of used against us to create this division. And, and also on a bigger scale is like a people divided is a, is a people conquered. So it's also mm-hmm. a really cool way to like enforce some like authoritarian rules. Like, Hey, yeah. you can't express yourself freely on Facebook where the government gets to stand back and be like, well, they have their terms of service. What can we do? It's a free market. Oh, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So like now, mm-hmm. now they're, I'm talking at you, and I want your opinion. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I'm listening. I'm getting it. I'm getting it all in. Yeah, I agree. I agree, man. It's. I'm, it, sorry, I'm I, laughing at the I, chat. Somebody said something ridiculous. I'm sorry. It, go ahead. No, it's good. I think it's all a distraction. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, everything. Ah, man. So is this is my viewpoint on everything, and. You asked me like how much I paid attention to all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And I tried not to pay too much attention to it because at the end of the day, uh, people got, this is, I think this is like, I really want to get this across to people. At the end of the day, like you are your own individual. And if you can figure out how to like, what's the word, maximize yourself, like everything else is external. You know what I'm saying? Like, like people really want to change the world but you, you have to change yourself first like that's where it starts then once you you know then you can link up with people who have also are also able to change themselves like people are so like he's the president oh my life is over but fuck man like you're lost already like you've lost you've already lost the game yeah it's you know what i'm saying like that's what they want right that's exactly what they want yeah. all this stuff 
<laughs> they're clap. They're like, fucking yeah, yeah. Our plan's going accordingly. Like, they don't want it. Like, they don't yeah. want people to be like, oh wait, like I can control some stuff. I can't control all everything, but like at least I can control some stuff. And that's the hard. It's hard. Like, mm-hmm. it's not easy. Like, and that's they. <laughs> they don't want us to do it. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, that's my viewpoint on everything. I know it's a very like. <laughs> Like uh, what's the word? It's, Esoteric it, and like it's a little broad, but I think there's there's yeah. some really interesting. Well, I think that I mean it's broad in a good way because mm-hmm. you're a, because whatever it is that you're you're looking for in life, whatever the passion is that you're sort of looking for, whatever that path is, it, it all comes mm-hmm. with sort of um, finding some sort of discipline within yourself. Mm-hmm. It all comes mm-hmm. with 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 finding some kind of 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 way that you can find a, a balance of how you mm-hmm. go through life. It's like, mm-hmm. how do you balance uh, your passions with just trying to make money to, to support mm-hmm. your family? How do you balance all this stuff? And uh, it, it, it's about character and it's about building up your own character. And, and mm-hmm. what I've noticed just in my own lifetime is uh, I used to be 325 pounds in high school. And oh, I was man. I was able to lose all that weight, and I've been able to keep it off. I'm awesome. getting fat as shit during quarantine, but who knows? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we all, you know, we all irrelevant, <laughs> Joker. You think it's irrelevant? <laughs> they allow you to think that you allow them nothing. Hmm. Interesting. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but but it's like you should be uh, if. Let's go back to my example, just because this is how I've seen it happen on several times. It's um, there was a couple points in my life where I was fat, I lost weight, and it inspired a lot of people around me to lose weight. And now Boom. they are losing weight, and they kept the weight off. There was a Boom. point in my life where drinking was out of control for me, and I stopped drinking. And even Boom. and and that the the fact that I stuck to it for years and years inspired other people to do it. Boom. And it's like, dude, I've been following you. I think it's so cool. And so just from my perspective of what I've seen, if you start building up yourself, if you start really mm-hmm. taking care of yourself and start trying to focus on making yourself better, on how you interact with people, how you react to people, how you react to, uh, to bad times, how you react mm-hmm. to when the times are bad, how the times when, because yep. when, when the times are good, everything's good. But when it's bad, you know, that whole good time attitude kind of goes out the window yeah, and some people crumble exactly. and or, or some people move forward and they keep pushing and shoulder the burden and, and just keep going. But there's something to be said when you're when you said that is like if you just focus on building yourself up, people are going to notice people notice when people start rising to the top. Right. People notice when you start losing all that weight. People know and be like, yo, Josh did that. Josh. Josh lost 200 oh. pounds. I can fucking, I can fucking oh. lose 200 pounds if Josh can do it. And it, it's a really cool effect that I've seen personally. So I know that this stuff works. It's not just, and it's not just some subjective thing that happened to me. It's like anytime anybody in the community comes up, like they're, it, it, especially when they bring the block with them, it's like that oh, is. That's what, you know, that's what it's about. We're, we're here exactly. to build ourselves up so we can help the ones around us. I, I, oh. That's part of my mantra is, um, is like, love myself so I can love other people. Love others, yeah. yeah. And that's like when exactly. I, med- that's what I meditate on is like, love myself so I can love other people because it's like, you're not loving other people if you don't love yourself. And it starts with oh. self-love and it starts with caring enough about yourself that you want to make a change in yourself. And just by making that 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 change, you inspire other people around you to do that change and be better and to be a better exactly. person in this world. And, exactly. and that's why I'm glad Donald Trump's the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? It just comes down to like who, the character. Like people forget about character. Like everyone who's cool, but what's the fucking character? Yeah. Like what's the character right. at the end of the His day? Like was what garbage. is the fabric? Yeah. yeah. Like there's so many people's character garbage and fake and like not worth mm-hmm. a shit who are trying to sell themselves as some kind of honorable person that we should be trusting mm-hmm. our, 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 our livelihood with. I, I don't mm-hmm. trust them to fucking balance their own checkbook. They can't even fucking come together yeah. and, and, and send us fucking money and help. Boom. After they right, shut right. us down, you know, like they can't even exactly. get shit done. 
Uh, exactly. Amen. Self love. Anyone who runs tends not to have great character. Anyone who runs, oh yeah, runs for office. Yeah, I, exactly. It's like we <laughs> we pick these assholes who we expect to have like this perfect background, this perfect mm-hmm. record. They are perfect under all pressures, and and that was part mm-hmm. of the appeal for Trump was like he, this mm-hmm. imperfect person who's calling out the establishment is out there fucking mm-hmm. making waves, and people are like, yeah, exactly. And that I, was the original appeal. Yeah, and I get it because that's a appealing to me anybody who's out there Mm -hmm. speaking against power i i'm always listening i'm just like i'm Mm -hmm. always there because and not that i was there for trump because i have been with thankfully for the last six years i have record proof that i have been (laughs) staunchly against trump and there's nowhere in there that you'll find me saying i voted for trump or i'm going to got it but there is moments where i'm like i see what he's doing there that makes sense space force i like that i like space space is really Mm -hmm. interesting to me let's get with space force that's tight like let's do it it's actually a good show on netflix too did you did you like it i never gave it a chance I like it. It's it wasn't. Funny. It wasn't. It wasn't what it's, I wanted right away. Right. <laughs> so it's not I was, what I wanted, but I was like, I'll take it. I'll take it, Steve Carell. Well, I love The Office. I love that. Yeah. And 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 you know that that uh, I know that all, all those people were sort of back to make that. And then mm-hmm. I started hearing I that a lot that. of people hated it. So I, I don't know. I haven't really. I haven't really been keeping up on TV. I don't know. Have you? Did you? Uh, when the pandemic hit, were you like Netflix and doing the whole thing, or how, no, did, you, how I, did you react no, yes to the pandemic? No. Okay, well, I actually started making a lot of music, and it's both like I was productive and unproductive. Like I released like three projects last year, um, but I also like watched a ton of shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah. I mean, like it, it's so, yeah. it, it, it's. It, I you can't hold anybody. You can't blame people for being like freaked out and needing a, a place mm-hmm. to direct that like for, you know mm-hmm. anxious energy. Is like we'll just binge watch fucking Tiger King until the pandemic's gone. I, <laughs> I know. I mean, I, I didn't believe I was gonna get into that show. I was like, <laughs> I'm not gonna watch this show. And then like two weeks later, I was like, I can't believe I'm watching this show. <laughs> I was like, this I can't show... what's going on in this show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very into this show right now. <laughs> Like, like to the point, <laughs> I really need Trump to like pardon fucking Joe Exotic. Okay, I just yeah, think he exactly. deserves a second well, chance. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, 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 part of me, part of me, yeah. I don't know. Some people are like, he should stay in there, but then some people are like, nah, get him out. <laughs> that, that dude tried to have someone murdered. Of course, he should be in prison. Stay yeah. in prison, Joe Exotic. <laughs> well, Learn your lesson. That's what I'm saying. Like, you should. You should take the time out, man. <laughs> take the time out, bro. You're like, all... did you hear? He was like already, and like I think he had like a limo. He tried to have like a limo service and everything. Oh yeah. Get him. And... Oh, I heard. I I heard. I heard that he was broken up for weeks, or not weeks. It's it hasn't been weeks, but he, he was really. Weeks, but... but he's been made for him. He's been yeah yeah right. Well, I can't imagine every day. Uh, I've been to jail before. I know how time oh. moves in jail. <laughs> it's I see. Very I see. very yes. slow and very painful. Yes. Um, yes. yeah, so that, that, yeah, well, who, you know, fuck him. He, he let him just stay there. Uh, <laughs> like, he was high on meth, like banging all these dudes, like turning yeah. dudes and stuff. Nothing and against the that. tigers. And the, and the tigers. People he, always forget about the tigers. It's the true. Thing, you know what it's saying? true. Those poor animals who are getting fed People like just old forget meat. about the, t- like, the drama. <laughs> but what of the tigers? Yeah. No, and, yeah. Uh, by the way, I don't want to, I don't want anybody thinking that I don't think it was okay that he was banging dudes and doing math i'm just saying like his life wasn't really that awesome <laughs> i mean it was i guess in some and to some people it was all but like the uh, dude needed to right. take a time out like he's that we we, exactly. we can take a time out here i did community there service a cat ranch uh, so i basically lived it i think oh, oh. <laughs> cat ranch you did community service <laughs> a cat ranch That's okay. what'd you do joker what'd you do what you what, what were you selling <laughs> I'll tell you what I got locked up for if you tell me. Uh, okay, anyways. Uh, that, yeah. Uh, hey, Mike. And chat. Oh, hey, what's up, lovely Lace? How you doing? Good to see you, lovely. Thank you for being here. Uh, yeah, the, the so so the pandemic at first, um, I'm sure like everybody else, you're a little freaked out and like, what the hell's yeah. going on and stuff. But sure. so, so you watch TV, but you, uh, you started doing projects and stuff. Tell me about the projects you were working on. 
Uh, well, I released, let's see, I released, like, I did a re-release of like my very first EP ever on that. Um, I released it on SoundCloud when I was in college um, in 2015 or so, but um, I decided to like make it a deluxe and add like one more song onto it. Um, so I did that like early January or so. And then um, summer came around and I doing like last year, I did like a summer project called Simply Summer or not last year, two years ago, I did a summer project called Simply Summer 19. It was just a little four track project of like summer vibes, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so I just re-upped and did the Simply Summer 20. I was like, all right, I'll, I'll keep this bus rolling. I think it'll, it'll be a thing. Um, and this one was actually, I think eight or nine songs. So I kind of doubled it up. Nice. Um, but and I, at, at that point, I thought I, thought I was going to be cooling for the rest of the year. And maybe just figure out, you know, just figure out something else to do. I didn't think I was going to do anything major. But then, <clears throat> I don't know, as an artist, sometimes you just get inspiration. Right. Like, muses talk to you or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I just got this, like, inkling, like, okay, it's time for you to do, like, a project or an album. You know, I wanted to do an album, but I just didn't think I was at the, you know, time, space to, like, do, like, a really full-length album. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'm still going to developing and things like that. Let me just... But I was like, something just kept on pushing me and just saying, no, 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 no. It's, it's time to just do the album. You don't have to, it's not, it's don't gotta be like perfect album or whatever, but like time for you to do this kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And it was cool because like you said, the pandemic, you're not really doing much. So like gave me like extra time to really like focus and hone in on like how I wanted to do this. So it was like my first time weaving like a concept together like a whole concept together like making all the songs kind of fit within like the concept you know yeah. i did this some simply summer but like those are like here and there you can get it's a summer vibe but like this was like my first time man. all right this is a concept album and like this is what i want to get across to people um and i came from the perspective of like i don't even necessarily need it to be like this commercial success or whatever but I feel like it was just something that I needed to do, especially with where we're at right now. It's, it, it's like a a door that I needed to walk through. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, now that everything's shut down, what are you going to do? Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, you haven't done this before, so when's when are you going to do it? Mm -hmm. So, and then so I kind of used it as like, okay, I'll do it. And then whatever lessons I get from that, I'll go, you know, moving forward. And it's been great, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got a lot of people on there. Like, I, a lot of, I'm out here in Sacramento, so I got a lot of different um, Sacramento artists on there, um, a couple different artists um, that I know from college. So it's a very, like, sentimental, um, sentimental, I'm making up words here. It's a very sentimental, <laughs> it's a very sentimental um, project. Um, so I'm really happy with how it came together. I have some, like, interludes in there, too, with, like, a couple comedian, like, a comedian that I know and everything. Oh, so cool. it's, like, a very, like, ah, oh, like this is like my masterpiece kind of project. It's not a masterpiece, you know what I'm saying? But this is like I did it, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And like, yeah, exactly. And I um I've gotten very good feedback on it so far. Um, I'm working out like how I'm good marketing it and everything. So like I said, I'm using it as like a um, a stepping stone, um, benchmark learning process kind of thing. And it's actually like you know I've made a lot of connections through it and with it so far so i'm already seeing like oh like i didn't even think like this would come from making this album but like the fact that i did this these other things are coming from so yeah. and that's kind of how like life is you know what i'm saying it's like you kind of have to just do something and then like you, you you might not see the other things that come from it kind of thing yeah so, um but oh, totally no i those are like the... the yeah those are the projects that i've worked on since the pandemic but even since then like I, i'm like working on more stuff now like i didn't even think i would be working on stuff but like since that like it sprung like other ideas i'm like oh shoot what i need to work on it now because you know it's like i've already met like different connections they're like okay well we need you know if you have this ready i'm like oh shoot i don't so let me get that going so yeah. you know like and that's that's <laughs> it just goes to like my whole like i said like i just said sometimes you just need to do something and that will lead to other things for sure. No, I, I absolutely agree with that. Like sometimes you you, you 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 don't even really know what you're doing. You're just sort of doing, mm -hmm. right? You're just sort of going mm -hmm. off this impulse, this 
I mean, as artists, we 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 wait for the muse or we we invoke the muse or and we have right. these impulses that we sort of have to like we can't deny, right? It's like mm-hmm. sometimes I just have to go play my guitar because that's just what I do. it's kind of a psycho it's kind of a psychopathy type, it. but it's still like mm-hmm. a it's still like this. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, but it's something I have to do or or I'll get the huge need to do, but. But when you jump into a project or jump into something that you're not completely sure, like streaming for me and my mm-hmm. wife was that. And it was like, well, we see this cool opportunity. We see this this medium that's definitely on the rise, uh, especially because of the pandemic. It, it, everybody's sort of stuck at home, needs something to watch. And Twitch is this yeah. really amazing platform that sort of provides a video element to what we we're doing. So, you know, we went on it, but we didn't know what the hell we were doing. We didn't really have anybody telling us what to do. We didn't, you know, yeah. like there was no guidelines but as we get into it it sort of spawned other ideas that led to other things that led to these connections that led to that yeah and it's like sometimes you just have to do and not really overthink it it's just like jump in face first just see where you land and and then sometimes you you smash your head on some rocks and sometimes you land in a pool you know it's like or 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 the ocean it's like it's like it just it's what happens it's it's how it works but then when you smash your head on the rocks you learn how to like make yourself you learn how to fix yourself exactly you have that skill yeah so going forward like double the you know it's a double whammy like Either way, I'm cool. Like, if yes. I got it, cool. If I don't, cool. <laughs> have you ever had those moments? Uh, the, have you ever had a time in your life where you're like, I, I'm not going to do that because I, I, I'm afraid to fail at it? Um, Yeah, like my whole singing <laughs> career, like this whole artist's career. Like, <laughs> yes, this, like, everything in your life. <laughs> all this, everything in <laughs> <my> life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, like that's literally, I was like, nah. And then like, it was like other people that are like, just do it. And it's like, yeah, but you know, like... <laughs> What? No. <laughs> and, and you have I mean, a career, like you, you, you're a nurse, correct? Correct. Yes, yeah, yeah. I am an LBN. Yeah. So I mean, it's not and, like. Well, please. Well, what were you gonna say? And I, well, I was just gonna say, it, you know, it's not like you're just this like um this this musician who's like, oh, I call myself mm-hmm. a musician, but really right. I'm just this deadbeat who fucking think dreams about <laughs> doing it, you know, or whatever the situation is. It's like you know, whatever. It's like you, you have a career. You, it's not like you're just this dude who's just out there floating around pretending or yeah. whatever it is. It's like you mm-hmm. are somebody who has a career. You, you know, especially in the health industry at this time, it's mm-hmm. insane. But at this time, uh, yeah. I, you... I tell you, dude, every, everything is like everything. Like, uh, so I'll talk to you on like two points here. Please. Um, so originally, like I, it was, <laughs> I, I, in high school, like I was just school and sports and it, I, you know, I sang and did like music stuff at home just, you know, for myself. Cause I thought it was cool. Mm. Uh, other friends like just knew about it and like eventually somebody like told the music teacher or something that um, that I can sing or whatever. And she kind of like coerced, not coerced me, but she's like, hey, you should do choir um, at that sixth period or whatever the last period of the day was. And I was like, oh, I got football practice. I can't really do that. Da, 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 da. But then she's like, okay, what about like uh, the last quarter? Because, you know, you don't have, you'll be done with uh, practice and you won't have workouts and things like that. And I was like, okay, I'll think about it. So that was just, that was the first instance of like, oh, I don't know. Like, eh, I don't, <laughs> yeah. But then I, I ended up doing it, yeah. which kind of like forced me like even further down the path. Like, okay, well, like, well, like what, what else can I do with this? So it wasn't until I got to college that um, it was like, I joined a fraternity and like, there's like this showcase that they do. And I didn't want to do it. Uh, I, cause like at that point I was on like the whole med school track because my parents really wanted me to go to med school i'm nigerian and that's like the thing uh, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah you know hey man so they just I want the best life for you in the in this country I, right yeah. yes i, I, I understand my it. mom's mexican she yeah. wanted me to go and be a college educated person too like please just this is why i'm here mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. exactly <laughs> exactly this is why i didn't sleep <laughs> no i get it i yeah. get it i get it um so you know, and they, I had also joined an acapella group, shout out to BFOM, shout out to SIGA, because like those two groups are kind of the ones that like pushed me into like who I am today. I was in the acapella group and my, my fraternity found out I was in the group and they wanted me to do, they wanted me like to do the um, philanthropy where it's basically this big showcase every um, 
like fraternity in the Greek system has one person and it's kind of like a talent show. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to do it. I was like, I, I barely wanted to join the fraternity. I was just like, I kind of just want to chill guys. And they're like, no, 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 no. You got to do it. So I was like, like for what? Like, I really don't want to do it. And like, no, 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 no. You got to do it. So that was like one, that was like another one to push me in. And then I ended up winning the whole thing. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> didn't even, ex- did not expect that. Yeah. So it wasn't until like the end of like the whole event and like everyone's like turned up and partying and I got to go home and do homework because like, you know, I'm still on that. I'm still like on that track. My buddy, um, Frank Conrad comes up and he's like, he's drunk at this time. He's like, dude, I know you want to do this. I was like, no, <laughs> I got to be a doctor, man. I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, no, 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 no. I, I know like, this is what you want to do. Like, I can see it. Like, this is like, you like, I, I can, like, this is what you, you got to do it. Like, if you want it, then you got to do it. So like, those like instances of me like being like yeah I don't know were, but reinforced with other people like no you gotta jump you gotta yeah. do it you gotta do it I finally like took the hint I was like okay well let me let me figure it out and that kind of spurned like the whole events of like me becoming an artist okay yeah that was the first point and now fast forward to like a few years ago I'm out of college um I didn't go to med school like my <laughs> parents plan so now it's like I'm trying to figure out like how to get like stay on my feet um. Because, you know, I didn't I didn't apply for any, like, grad schools or anything like that. Because I was like, okay, I'm going to try to do this artist stuff. Like, but I got to figure it out. Um, because, like, if I go to school right now, that's just going to, that's time well, that's and it. money away from doing it. That's you know all, yeah, that's all you're doing. If you're going to med school, that's all you're doing for the next mm-hmm. three or four or five years, however long it takes. Exactly, exactly. And if I try to pick it up then, who knows if I'll even want to. Right. Um, so... I was trying to figure it out for for like two, three years after graduation. I really just couldn't like get on my feet and then like ended up doing a really bad like Craigslist job, which like ended up stuck like the bank like froze my account because it was a bad check that bounced. Oh yeah. And so I'm in this position where like, I'm like, fuck, what do I do? I have no money. And my mom's like, you got to do something. So if you go back to school, uh, like, you got like maybe be because she's a nurse mm-hmm. she's like if you go to like find a, a program i can help you throughout this like year or whatever mm-hmm. and i was another situation where i'm sitting there like fuck what do i do yeah because i don't want to go back to school yeah i don't really want to be a nurse forever but i know that I, I want to do this music stuff but i can't like i don't have money to do it right, like right. so i'm here in this like rock and hard place and it's like what do i do um, and you know, I really did not want to go to school, but I was like, this is, this is a doorway. Yeah. <laughs> like this is, it's a one year program. You get in, do what you have to do, get out. You can support yourself, and, you know, do what you need to do. Yeah. So that's what I did. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I did that in 2019, one year program. Graduated in 2020. We took a trip to, as soon as I graduated, we took a trip to Nigeria for Christmas. Um, we came back in January. Um, I'm a nurse, Corona hits. <laughs> Imagine, look at the timing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 the whole time I'm like, oh my God, Christmas is like, come back January. I'm a nurse. Time to be a nurse. <laughs> exactly look at the timing like Ooh. look at the timing yeah imagine if i just imagine if i wasn't i could have been like I, I would not be able to do anything i had done this last year i wouldn't financially yeah. like you know what i'm saying Who knew? like i would not have been able to do it like so that's why i say like just things come up and like you don't want to do them but like right. sometimes you got to be like you just you, you got to assess and like it, it takes like an inner like <laughs> like got and you know what I'm saying it takes like some kind of thing like all right I don't want to do this but I got to do it cuz I see a bigger picture kind of thing well i think that's and part that's of like, being an adult as well it's like you're like i'm i'm a uh what am i going to do i'm going to go around saying i'm a rapper but i don't make any money right. and live off my right. parents you know like what am right. i what am, is that really what i want to do it's right. like all right yeah, no, I, I I get that, I get that, but then in that, so so you went to, so you're in it, you're in it, like uh, mm-hmm. you you went to be a nurse and you're a nurse currently, so from yeah, I mean it's amazing that you were able to do all this stuff with music, but I mean also thank you for all the, 
<laughs> all the shit you're going through. No, right man. Now. No, the answer. It's there's different. Like uh, I, I will say, I don't work very, very closely with like people who are infected with corona or anything like that. Oh, my demographic of people. Saucy. Yeah, my demographic of people are like people who have like intellectual challenges, um, who like maybe need like care in their homes, kind of thing. So it's also kind of a blessing in that aspect where I'm not super exposed. You know what I'm saying? Um, to like what is going on so mm-hmm. i don't have to like worry about like you know necessarily coming you know infecting my family and things like that even though we're all nurses we kind of are all in like the same kind of field as well too it's weird so <laughs> so so out. then are you going to get the vaccine so i am not opposed to getting the vaccine mm-hmm. but i want to wait and see that's what i said <laughs> i'm not opposed i'm I with you man see. I would. You know what I'm saying like I'm in the healthcare field. I understand biology and how everything works. You need to get vaccines because you know what I'm saying like they work. Um, I know people have a thing with autism. The yeah. Studies are not based in very factual things, statistically speaking. <laughs> okay. Um, Fair enough. And uh, and uh, what is it? But I do know that there's um bugs in the first editions of things so <laughs> right right that no that's where i'm coming from the same point yeah you know i'm saying like let me wait for the firmware to update and then i'll um and i'll see bill gates pr- wants you to get a vaccine probably bill gates probably yeah. i mean it's, you know i'm sure a lot of people want to get you know want us to take the vaccine and stuff i'm gonna eat lurking for a while enjoy your meal enjoy your lurk lovely thank you very much uh, for being here and lurking with us, um, yeah. Thanks for lurking. The are you familiar with Twitch? By the way, I didn't know if you're familiar with Twitch. No, but I have been like, it's almost another like one of those doorway things. I've been like, mm, should I do this or should I not do this? I really want to. I don't know if I'll have the time to, but maybe that's an excuse. You know, <laughs> yeah, well, I, yeah, we we all make excuses and I do that. Uh, let me check my messages because apparently someone sent me something that needs to be looked at right now. Okay. Oh, okay. it's Raina. It's all gone. It's gone. There is no more. It was an emergency. It was a medical emergency. Okay. It was it was a oh, weed no. emergency. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I know, right? I agree. It's like, <laughs> I feel bad for the for for the lady. I'm yeah. Sorry that oh, you're uh, suffering from a dry season. And well, we are in the Midwest, but we uh, we're okay. We do okay for ourselves here. Gotcha. <laughs> we do okay. Um, gotcha. Yeah. The so so then you didn't have you weren't in the thick of of you weren't in these corona wards you know setting up these makeshift things and stuff but so then what, what what's your take on the i mean being in california and and seeing mm-hmm. how much that they sort of locked things down and made things mm-hmm. what is your take on it what is your take do you think it's should be we should we all be in lockdown until further notice or like how do you feel about all this especially how your city and your your mm-hmm. um your state handled it Right. Um, I do not necessarily like that it's all shut down. Um, but I can understand that we are very populated and there's a spread that happens. So I can understand that. Um, but then I think my default mindset kicks into place. And I'm just like, all right, well, I still got to do me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's weird. It's like, that's just how I am right now. It's like, people are like, what do you? I was like, it's that, that's that's how it is and we still gotta live you know what i'm saying right. um it's like if you like what like what am i really gonna do about it you know what i'm saying it's like sure i don't like it but i'm not the only person necessarily in this town or space going through it if i don't like it i need to move to a different state or whatever you know what i'm saying like but i don't want to move to a different state i want to stay here so i have to deal with this you know what i'm saying i do feel that um um, I have a hunch that this might just be my optimism, but I have a hunch that things will just slowly open up again. Um, but I just I have no clue the timetable of like when masks will not be a thing. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It may be probably next six months when the vaccine effects start to you know circulate and things like that. Um, but like as as far as like how I feel about it. Sure, I don't like it. I can understand what's going on. 
what am I going to do to like, what can I really do to change that aspect of life? Mm. <laughs> so I still have to, <laughs> right, right. You know I still got to get, I still got to get shit cracking. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, like I said, it's like, this is like one of those times where like, oh, your head smashed a rock. Oh my God, figure out how to fix yourself. So, right. you know, later on down the road, it's not such a big issue. Right. How, you know, how can like we, that. how can we dive next time without smashing my head on the rock? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, you know, when I asked you earlier about, about, you know, have you done things that you're afraid to fail at? It's like, well, mm-hmm. it's because it's like, um, that's most people, right? It's most people yeah. have these big grand ideas. They have this want and this pull towards mm-hmm. performance or starting an Etsy account or, or you know, mm-hmm. opening up a bar and grill, whatever it mm-hmm. is, you know, people have these ideas, but then they're just like, but they automatically flash forward to the, the, the death of it. You know, it's just like, yeah. but if I start yeah. it, it's really hard and there's so much competition. If I start another bar and grill, I have to pay for a, a, a license or, you know, mm-hmm. or, you know, you find out what goes into owning a restaurant and it's just, Oh my mm-hmm. God. And it's just, people mm-hmm. are just like, this is, this is just too much for me to risk mm-hmm. and I'm just not mm-hmm. going to do it. But, but on the other mm-hmm. hand, What's funny about, I don't know, there was this um, Will Smith meme going around. Not meme, but it was like a video. It's like one of those inspirational videos that has like the... Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it. uh-huh. and it's Will Smith being like, you know, when you're down and down, you know, he's doing his thing, <laughs> which I love Will Smith. By My way. dad said brick by brick. Exactly. It's, it, you, but by the end of it, you're gassed up. You're like, yes, Will Smith, I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to do that wall. Not that way, but I'm going to do it. Yes, exactly. And then you have lunch, and you get a little tired, and you're like, I'll do it tomorrow. Like, I'm going to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, was, spaghetti was the yeah. wrong choice for for lunch. Right. Take a nap. <laughs> too, many carbs, too, many carbs. <laughs> too many carbs. Too many carbs. So many carbs for lunch. That's just too much for lunch for me. Uh, no, but the but that that idea of, of fear of failing is is exactly what keeps people back. But but what Will Smith video was about was like that that God or whatever you want to call God or whatever mm-hmm. whatever idea of a higher power is to you or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they've made the, they, there's this weird coding that's built into life where mm-hmm. if you don't take risk, if you don't find out, like you, mm-hmm. you'll, you never do and, and you'll never get there. And in fact, mm-hmm. you're working against yourself because you're constantly mm-hmm. being like, I should do it. I'm not. There's a point in your life where you're like, I should have did it. I had that. Why didn't I? And right. then there's regret. And then mm-hmm. there's all these things. And it's just living in your misery that you should have done something or could have done something or whatever it is you know Mm -hmm. and and what's interesting that there's this code baked in that what you find is is when you do take these outlandish risks like instead of going to medical school you went and you were you know a nurse but it was allowed you to sort of be in a in a very interesting place at a very interesting time and it allowed you to fund Mm -hmm. your projects and allowed you to do all these things you took these risks that were outside of what you want or your comfort zone Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. and what you find on the other side is almost always like even if you fail at it there's the you the the information that you gather from that Mm -hmm. failure is so crucial to coming back and taking another swing at it so it's like Mm -hmm. no matter what you do no matter what kind of risky moves you're going to take even if you do fail you have to just remember it's like that's just a way that uh, to to learn what not to do and yeah. and, 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 and and instead of just giving up on the whole idea yeah. of taking a risk and stepping outside your comfort zone, it's just like, well, it's exactly. easier just to be comfortable here at home exactly. with spaghetti exactly. and Netflix. And... Honestly, exactly. Dude, it's like video games, man. It's like, okay, hard level. Are you going to not play the level? Okay, you might die a couple of times, but every time you die, you get experience points. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. Be experience points, so you're better at it the next time. So right. that's, that's a, kind of the same thing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah it so, totally like, is. It's, it's, you, yeah. you're just building up these bars man you're building up experience and eventually there's this weird point when you've been following the path that, of of the heart that happens where all paths sort of merge into this mm. this one coherent mm. thing which is sort of happened to me for me right now is like all these things from being a musician from being you know from the podcast from the way mm-hmm. I was brought up to the different talents I have with video editing to mm-hmm. to to keyframing all these different things that I know how to do and that I've learned and 
weird different ways that it, it, at the right. moment didn't make sense to me it's like why am i taking yeah. a photoshop class right now and why am i right. an adult learning right now who knows yeah. well it, at the moment i was like dude i'm gonna be a i'm gonna be a, a graphic designer now you know so mm-hmm. like oh, that's what i'm doing <laughs> and here i am mm-hmm. an adult ed and and even though that was a weird thing that just sort of a blip in time that really didn't make sense at the time it is so important now in how I design flyers and how I catch people's mm-hmm. eyes and having this idea of how wh- how design works and and le- what layers are and and just all these little things that don't really make sense. It's like you're collecting these tools in your tool belt and then all of a sudden there's this opportunity mm-hmm. or the if you've been following your heart, if you've been sort of paying attention to the road signs, mm-hmm. it all sort of converges and it all sort of comes together in this really weird way. And that's what Twitch is for me is that all these ideas, all these aspects and all these avenues that I've traveled in the past have sort of connected into this one stream, which is, is pretty intense, bro. That's amazing. <laughs> That's how it is, you know what I'm saying? It that's is. The, the you journey, have to you, know you have saying? to take a risk. You have to. Mm-hmm. And my wife, she wanted to move from San Diego back to the Midwest. I which I mm-hmm. moved away from the Midwest, you know, and I had no plans in ever coming back, but she mm-hmm. eventually convinced me. If you can call mm-hmm. that convincing, I would call it more <laughs> like blackmail, but uh <laughs> Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. But hey, whatever. Blink twice. Blink twice, man. <laughs> Everything's good. I love my they're wife. On the way. They're on the way. <laughs> no, I, no, it the, the, it was a harsh reality, but but what happened was is that we took this risk of coming back to the Midwest. My wife started becoming an actress. She works at this pronoun, really renowned uh, theater here in Michigan. Um, I came back at a time when my family really needed an extra pair of hands. Um, I came back at a time at, at a time in the city that I'm from that that there was this really amazing renaissance of of, of places to play because when I left there was no places to play and make money as a musician so like the the city that I was from had a music scene where I was a, able to work as a musician and it was really cool when we came back everything sort of started working out and there were some hard dark times but on the other side of that was just uh, was a lot of opportunity and a lot of um, a lot of really cool cool things that we've been able to do since coming back here that we would have never ever been able to do, you know, living paycheck to paycheck, paying exorbitant amounts of rent in San Diego, California. It's like we're able to really have options and really do things, and, and it sort of allowed us to end up here on Twitch, where we found which we find like our home at like we found we feel very at home on this platform and awesome. she has her own channel i have my own channel you know it's like it's a it all of this sort of coalesced into um not, i'm not just saying we're here for twitch and that's how <laughs> it all comes down to twitch but but right, it's, right, right. but it all comes down to these these ideas that we had that this really risky move to move because when you think about a musician moving away from the west coast to find opportunity mm-hmm. That doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Like, right. it's like how much, you know, how much? Where's the music industry? You know, it's it's mm-hmm. either mm-hmm. in L.A. or uh, New York. But mm-hmm. when you get out of that mentality and you get out of that, you get out of that bubble, that Cali box, bubble, yeah. especially that SoCal mm-hmm. bubble, is so <laughs> can be very interesting. Uh, but once you get out of that bubble, you and you come back and you meet the real people that the the real the real people of the world. Um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you, you start seeing things differently and I've, I've come to a lot of peace with being back here cause I was not about it, but mm-hmm. now that there's nothing else to do, but, uh, but eat bad food and, and, uh, <laughs> be at home. Uh, now my wife wants to move somewhere else. So let me just tell you, of all course, of that means yeah. that she's not happy with her decision <laughs> and ah, she was wrong in the first place. Boom. Got it. Boom. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Let's get serious. So wait, where's the, where's, I was gonna ask, where's the where's the next destination? She don't know. I'm not a hater. So. I'm just joking. <laughs> she she's she's actually she is right in perpetuity. That's that's what I've come to realize. It's like Got even it. if she's eventually. wrong, eventually, eventually it's right. <laughs> if, even if it's wrong in that moment, eventually right. it turns out she's right. Got it. And when I do get those moments, those winning moments of being right, 
Mm-hmm. Well, I don't, I don't do it very well. I'm not a great one. <laughs> it's like boom! All right. You let it, right. You gotta let her know. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's just, she recollects it in her brain. Now. Exactly. Okay. Remember, sometimes I'm right. <laughs> so, so she gets a prediction started. I, I can't wait to see what you got going now. Uh, win channel points if you make the correct prediction. I have no idea what's going on in my own channel. Well, just give me one second, Josh. Mike no will sleep on the couch. Oh my! What the? <laughs> That's <laughs> fucked up. You're taking. Mike will sleep on the couch. You slept on the couch <laughs> last night because you don't like our bed. She's acting Ooh. like she's acting like she's acting like this is this is gonna be something. We all know. Look. Look, I, I, I'll, I'll sit here and admit it in front of Josh, a, a person who I just met, and, and these lovely group of people who are in chat. Look, my wife is better at everything than me. She's smarter. She smells better. She's much prettier. She's, she's just nicer. And Great she answer. has a better outlook on life than me. So there you go, everybody. She's better. And I would be go. a small and insignificant man without her so okay. there you go good love you honey yeah. love you baby <laughs> love you baby doll uh so um with your uh you were saying that you're working on uh the scorpion and the sun and i was just curious on that and, and there's more to that that like I, I didn't catch the whole thing but oh yeah uh, you... scorpion and the sun wrote to command i put it out in november okay yeah okay okay it's out right now right so yes, probably, yes, yeah, yes. I was listening to it then. I was like, I thought this was a new release that you're coming out with. Mm. Lots of stuff going on over here. <laughs> so, so, so tell me about it. I mean, because because you were saying that this is a <laughs> stop, Wooby. Uh, you were saying mm. that this was a you know this was a concept album or or at least a closest thing that you. Uh, mm-hmm. Can you tell me about it and tell me a little bit like what the concept might be and you can yeah. if you don't want to explain your work you don't have to but yeah, yeah yeah I'll do like a little bit because you know like some stuff it really just might go over it might just go over some people said because like some stuff is like through like different like books that I read and things like that but the, the overall general concept is um it's like more of like some something like a, a self awakening or re reawakening kind of album um um that's like not an ascension but it like a, it's like a hero's journey kind of you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying like it's kind of like okay you start with like do i want to do this um but at the end of the day like if i have to do it and if i don't do it i'm wasting time kind of thing right um so that's like the general theme throughout the thing is like time like in everything there's like okay there's like time like there's choices you gotta make and in everything you do it's like there's a time aspect mm-hmm. so like that's like what i'll like kind of like leave people with okay um uh and it it's like a very I, I talk about like situations of like me growing up like um when i was a kid thinking about like do i even you know want to do music or whatever like not in those words specifically but like the sentiment of like um, I think um, one of my songs, Dream Ain't Free, is literally like a, a, from the perspective of me as like a 17 or 18 year old kid, um, just doing chores. And I'm like thinking like, okay, I'm very bored. Like I was just, my real first I was like bored with life. I was like, I guess I gotta be a doctor. Like, yes, this is how it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I guess not everybody gets to do what they wanna do. I literally remember that thought. Wow. Wow. That's a thought that I had. Mm-hmm. And, I, and like that, it was like, it's kind of like a check mark in like my journey, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? If you read like chat, if you were like, if there's chapters, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. in a book, it'd be like a a big chapter, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not everybody gets to do what they want in life. Wow. And like from that perspective is like what the song is from. But then it's also like, but you might have that dream, but it costs something. Like, you know, you can't just have a dream. It's like it costs something. Yeah. But then that's where people stop, you know what I'm saying? They see the price and they're like, eh, I can't afford it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? For sure. So it's like things like that I leave throughout the album. Like I talk about like um, situations with like chicks or like women in general. It's not one person in particular, but it's like a general concept of things. Um, and then I just also talk about like personal things you may go through. Like along the journey, you might like encounter a situation where other people are like, 
well, what are you doing? Like, I thought you, I thought you were doing this. Like, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? Like, meanwhile, you might be like working on things or maybe not, but you might be working on things and just the perspective from other people and the energy that you get, it's like, oh, well, you know what I'm saying? Look, guess, guess, not, not so hot. Da, 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 da. So it's like th- different s- situations you might go through along your journey. You know what I'm saying? Like naysayers or people who try to say like, well, I don't, it doesn't look like anything's going on when you might be doing something else like peripherally with it. And like, it's your ego to be like, hey, 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 yeah, but, 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 but this. So it takes like discipline. Yeah. It's like, okay, say what you want to say, but this is what, this is what's actually going. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then I also like have a, um, <laughs> I have like, one of my favorite tracks on there is like a group track for a bunch of like three other Sacramento artists. And everyone's just like talking about like, their their process you know what i'm saying like where they started from and how they're going about it things now and it's literally called um how it started how it's going or yeah exactly that's how it started or that's how that's what it's called and i love that song because everyone's flow is very different on it but everyone is hitting so hard like emotionally and like lyrically about like the process of where they started and where they're at now like it's it's and that, and that kind of like encapsulates kind of like the album and then i love the last track on there which kind of i'm not gonna like give it away but if people want to listen to it it's featuring my homie scandalous de leon he went hard on that and um i just love the the production on that oh the story behind that one can i tell the story oh please tell <laughs> tell all of it okay so my buddy matt blanco beats produced that that out al- that track um the last track on the album called for real um but the story behind that is i got there's a sound sample that when i was in nigeria um i sampled from um, this priest that was praying for me and my um family mm-hmm. um and like we were all singing at some point and i was like this sounds really good <laughs> so i pulled out my memo apps and recorded it um and so I was like, I'll use, I recorded a bunch of other different sounds and everything too while I was out in Nigeria. But I was like, I'll use this for a project in the future, maybe. Mm-hmm. Not knowing I was going to you know, work on this project this year, really. Okay. Um, but what ended up happening was I sent, you know, I sent that one specifically to the, my producer, Matt, and um, a couple of like, like this year, or no, not this, not this year, but 2020, like around around uh say october or so i like dropped my phone in the lake Ugh. so yeah so like i couldn't i was like no all my samples that i said i can't believe but luckily luckily um i like i was like we were able to recover that one sample somehow like it was stuck in an email attachment and we were able to recover it so that's like the one <laughs> living sound sample from the time that i um, went to go visit Nigeria this last year and we were able to use it and use it for that track and so it has an even more like you know sentimental um, emphasis and meaning behind it but you know the whole album is very like I like I try to put a lot of emotion into it, a lot of intro- introspective stuff and you know a lot of catchy shit you know what I'm saying in it as well too and stuff yeah um, I don't know if people like listen or read anything about like what's it called the laws of the universe or like esoteric teachings and things like that. But if you do, you might catch some of the, you know, some of the analogies and things like that in there. So, and what are some of the laws of the universe? One big one, um, um, is as above, so below. That's a really big law of the mm. universe. Mm-hmm. I'm above, sure you've heard that. Maybe you haven't I have seen maybe it. in other iterations as well, but mm-hmm. I'm uh, I'm dropping a link to the Scorpion in the Sun for anybody who's interested in the chat. Um, please go and click on that. That's a Spotify link for everybody, and that is for the album we are talking about. Mm-hmm. We can't really play too much of it just because mm-hmm. of DCMA. She's stirf, but <laughs> we'll see if we get muted yeah, for those uh, for those videos we played at the beginning here. But uh, yeah, so. uh, yeah. So so wait, is it, what was the law of the universe? Can you say that again? One more. There's uh, there's a, there's uh, there's a few of them. I think there's twelve of them to be exact. Um, from like. The readings I've done, but the one that sticks to my mind right now is the other ones I'm blanking on. But the main one is as above, so below. Oh, I, there's other ones I remember, but mm-hmm. as above, so below. And that one's basically like, hmm, how can I explain this? Everything that is happening externally 
is a reflection of everything that's going on internally. Mm. So if you think about like the universe, everything is like a mirror of each other, mm. like cells, they kind of work, uh, our atoms kind of work like cells, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And if you think about it, atoms also work kind of like the solar system. Yeah. Does it make sense? Yes, it does. And like the big, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. So it, that's like one little example of it. So if you take that same sense, your outer reality the above is just a reflection of what's going on below which is your inner self mm -hmm. so as above so below if you can a lot of people think it's one way or it's it's one way like the outside is the controller but it's a two-way thing you know what i'm yeah. saying or us as humans we're all like creators in a sense we can create our own realities right. so if you focus on working on what you need to do to create that like inner reality that inner belief that inner system then the outer system starts to reflect so as above so below but same thing is so below as above that's just the phrasing is as above so below yeah so that's like one rule of the universe like if you want like in um and i guess the hero's journey like if you want to experience whatever you believe a hero might experience or and it's weird because even necessarily since on the hero's journey you don't want to do it you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but then you come to the realization that you need to so once you come to that realization you then still have to do the inner work or whatever to get to that space you know what i'm saying yeah does that make sense it does so that's yeah it does that's, the, it, um, that's one aspect that's in there I, I i like that um because there's this this idea of like you you uh you can you can invite hell into your life right and 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 mm -hmm. And people think that they just have bad luck or something. It's just like, I just can't get any luck. But but you know, like if you're out there shoplifting and cheating on <laughs> cheating on your significant other, and you're doing all these right. things that, even if you don't believe in like a higher power, or if you don't believe in in you know karma or whatever it is, you have a very you know scientific point of view in life you got to think mm -hmm. about like when you're holding these ideas of your of yourself acting outside of how you present yourself right like so you mm -hmm. present yourself as somebody who doesn't cheat on your wife and you don't you don't shoplift and you and you, you don't do drugs or whatever it is you know um when you present yourself but this internal dialogue knows you know you know that what's going on you you know inside and so you sort of inv invite hell into your life. And even if you, uh, again, if you don't believe into it, just these vibrations and these thoughts and these connections that are in your head and this, this, uh, this, 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 um, this, this, uh, you know, chink in the armor, you know, like uh, of yeah. who you are, it, uh -huh. it still comes out and it invites, uh -huh. you know, and, and misery loves company. And so it can uh -huh. invite. So like you have the, uh, you have this, um, you have this weight that you're carrying in your show, in your heart and it mm -hmm. comes out in just different ways where it's like maybe you're a little abusive verbally to your wife or whatever it is mm -hmm. like these things that you don't like about yourself that you know that mm -hmm. that you're lying about to the world you know mm -hmm. it, it comes out in different ways and this is just psychology you know like this is just mm -hmm. this is just exactly. you know, which psychology is a is a practice and i know that's almost like a is a weird thing to sort of rely yeah. on too. Yeah. I know there's a lot of people, Western psychology, right? right? I know that a lot of people have a lot of, you know, they don't believe mm -hmm. in that, and they were just there's sort mm -hmm. of this idea that there's nothing to that, or at least it's, mm -hmm. you know, but but it is, but there is something to it, wh whatever position mm -hmm. you are. But if you invite, there's just inviting these ideas and inviting these these things that you do that you know are wrong. Mm -hmm. It comes out in different ways, no matter how much you think you're good at hiding it, or no matter how much you do, right. and and it affects the way that you move, the affect the way that you drive on the freeway because you're. Mm -hmm. I mean, it affects just just everything about you. It all it all mm -hmm. means something, and it all comes out and and it can come out in a bad way. And whereas to to when you look at the opposite, when you're like, um, I had somebody tell me, or maybe it's something I read it's so hard to keep track of all this shit but but it's mm -hmm. like if you're ever feeling bad about yourself and you feel like you're not worth anything and it's like because I, I i do I, I do the depression thing and i do the anxiety mm -hmm. thing and mm -hmm. all the yeah. fun things in life uh you know mm -hmm. like if you're feeling terrible about yourself go out and help someone and so like mm -hmm. when you the idea is like maybe you feel like you're a piece of crap but 
even if you but so so take yourself out and don't be a piece of crap like go out to the the shelter and feed some food to people you know do something for your mm-hmm. community and exactly. through that through that you'll find some kind of worth you know you find some kind of of purpose through that and and even mm-hmm. if you just do it once and you're like this is stupid don't just stop there mm-hmm. like if you're really trying to find some kind of self-worth you're really trying to get past you know like this 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 idea that you're worth nothing it's like go out and be worth something then and exactly. I, I know that's not easy for everybody. I know that I know how it I know how it feels to be stuck to in a bed, not wanting to be mm-hmm. outside and see the world and see anybody in, in your condition. But what happens is you you create this positive feedback loop in your head where it's just you're constantly feeding yourself these horrible thoughts, and and now you're depressed, and now you see how it's affecting your families and friend around you, and that makes you feel mm-hmm. even worse. And so we're just sort of. <laughs> constantly looping in and making ourselves feel worse and until you cut that you break that yeah. loop. and so you can invite heaven or hell into your life you know, just de- de- depending on how you want to do it and i feel like that kind of goes on the the what's what, true yeah. above is as above so below it's so the same thing when you were saying you got to love yourself you know what I'm saying so you can love other people same thing it's yeah. so it's, it's 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 the same thing and yeah, it's the first the first step is like awareness of what's going on. You know, and a lot of people it's just an automatic system. They don't even have the awareness of what's going on. So as soon as you, you can at least become awareness, you can start to slow down the impulses. You know what I'm saying? You right. start to attenuate, you know, your thoughts or whatever. And then you can go from there. That's the where the real work comes. But the first step is um uh awareness, like I said. Um but then it's not easy. Like I said, it's just a matter of like do you want to do this work? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's it. Right. Um, yeah. You had to decide for yourself. Right? It's not easy. And there's a lot of lazy ass people out there. <laughs> we live in a society that makes it very easy for people to just stay alive. You know, um, mm-hmm. yeah. it, 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 in a sense, like we don't have to go hunting for our food and we don't, mm-hmm. you know, things are sort of provided. Just like RuPaul says, if you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love somebody else? Yeah, wise words from yep. a wise man or yep. person. Yep. I, I, don't know <laughs> what, I don't know what RuPaul identifies that, so we'll just call, it, we'll call <laughs> them you. they. We're going with they today. That's our safe <laughs> That's our safe word. We'll say they, and uh, we'll, play it safe. It. we'll play it safe. Yes. <laughs> Please don't cancel me. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, yeah, it, it, it's, that, that's, that was a silly joke. Uh, but, I got it. But, We're good. Yeah, I, I, I like that. I like that you're bringing that into your music as well. I like that you sort of bring these higher concepts into it as mm-hmm. opposed to... I think it's missing. I do too. That, that I was exactly about to say. It's like when you look at like mainstream rap and, and you look at hip hop and, and what it is and what it's become. And, you know, there's some mm-hmm. awesome, beautiful guests, art, guests, beautiful artists out there who are doing great things. And even in the mainstream mm-hmm. media or mainstream mm-hmm. hip hop scene, I think that they're still doing awesome mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. But for the mo- most part, it's like really weird that it's like talking about like... I don't know, popping like the same three, four subjects, banging all girls, you know, yeah. and, and and recently you see where people are actually talking about mental health and stuff, which is really cool. Yeah, so I, there I, is a way. There's like a little bit of shift, but mm-hmm. well, um, a lot, um, there there's some people I talked to in in my city here. His name is Nightheart, who I really respect. The kid, he just turned like 21, and this kid has been through so much through his life. But he's just constantly releasing stuff. He's constantly making stuff. He's constantly creating. And he's just like, he's just a machine and he knows who he is and he knows how to operate within himself. And he's just killing. And he's talking about, and he's talking about partying and banging girls, but he's also talking about the higher mind stuff too, where I think you can, because that is life, this, this idea that we can't talk about, you know, selling drugs, but also, you know, you know, as above as, as below, you know, there's no reason why we can't, because that is the spectrum of life. It's like, Mm-hmm. We we all live on this crazy spectrum, and it's not just one thing or the other. It's mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. you know, he he likes but, to bang girls, but also talk about Nietzsche. You know, so like exactly, <laughs> God, nuance, you nuance. Know what I'm that's all. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing What's wrong with that. <laughs> nothing wrong with with just it's. But it's when you see this this like this this whole thing is now it's just about how much money i make and how much how right. many women that i disrespect and how mm-hmm. many you know mm-hmm. how many 
which which gangster rap is not really what's happening much now but still you know there is elements and echoes of that as well which mm-hmm. I, yeah. I'm not against that because, dude. I mean, Dr. Dre, who, who, gangster mm-hmm. rap is shit. So like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, bro, uh, who, Brother Lynch? I think he's a uh, yeah. someone from Sacktown, right, or Bay Area at least. Um, uh, yeah. So Mozzie's from here. Okay. Okay. So, but Mozzie's cool. Mozzie's, you know, but Mozzie's talking about like real situations. There's mm-hmm. a difference. You know what I'm saying? If you're talking about like a real situation that you've been to. That mm-hmm. was, you know, what I'm saying. You know, what I'm saying exactly. But, but there's a difference. Mm-hmm. So, for sure um and i agree that there's a shift like there is more people talking about the mental health there's more people talking about like the um, bigger aspects of stuff like nle chapa i've i'm hearing that he's he's doing more of like this you know uh rules of the like laws of the universe bigger concept stuff in his music as well too which is cool to see because he's like a uh, he's like a what's what are they called it's not drill you know what I'm saying? But like he's 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 from that like life, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. the, like the the drugs, the the guns, the women, all that stuff. But um lately he's been like on his whole meditation stuff, like all that stuff. So it's nice to see the change. Oh, and uh, X Life Raj, XXX Life or like yeah, something like that. I think that's his name, X Life. Rex Life Raj. He has um songs that are like that as well too. And so it is it, I say that it's missing, but I say that like not tongue in cheek, but like realizing that okay, it's missing, but more people are realizing that mm-hmm. it's missing. Um, and so you know, I just want to be a contributor to that stuff because I love rap music, I love um, hip hop, I love soul music. But at the end of the day, I there's an energy you feel it from me at, at the end of the day, and it's like when you listen to that all day, you can see the effect that it has. You know what I'm saying? I also realize that like, music is very powerful. It's like it's sound, it's sound waves. Like you, just like sunlight, you can't really like really capture it but you can you know what i'm saying right. and like it affects you in different ways um so for the collective of people i feel like it is not like i feel like you know not that i have a duty but almost like i have a duty it's like okay now that you know better what are you gonna do you yeah. know what i'm saying yeah like you know this is my way of like helping helping you know what i'm yeah. saying it's my way of like helping and and if people, if anybody can get any kind of solace or like greater knowledge from anything, that's that's the point. That's the right. goal. I want you to have a great time. You know what I'm saying? I'm not opposed to making party music, turn up music, and all that stuff. But I might throw a little bit of grain up some truth in there. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, while you're partying and hanging out, you might as well have that in the back of your mind. This higher yeah, thought, yeah. man. It's like, you know, uh, uh, Bonnie, uh, your lady friend Bonnie wrote in the chat like, I would love to listen to some rap music about being zero waste and, and being um, sustainable uh, and, and you know all I can think about is like when you think about it, like somebody rapping about sustainability it, it's it's not very gigs. Uh but <laughs> but I don't know neither was like talking about rubbers and stuff back in the day right like but but what happened was is that people start seeing this horrible AIDS come into the community and, and and they're like well how are we gonna let's get the message out and then now Snoop Dogg's talking about banging with Jimmy's on and yeah. the message got out so exactly. why not you know I mean at one point there was probably somebody was like I don't fuck with Jimmy's on. That's ridiculous. That is a stupid <laughs> thing to rap about. Who wants a piece of plastic over their right. junk while they're trying to get it in? You know, there's people, and people still feel that way. But, but there oh, wow. is this thing that's in the middle of the uh, of mm-hmm. our society where it's like we should probably use protected sex. You know, like that. Right. Just from the work that we did in the '90s as a society. Right we have a better outlook on how safe sex works. So why not? Why not? That that why not have have them rapping about sustain relax recycle your shit. Recycle your, you know your forties. It shit. comes down to taste. You know what I'm saying? It's like that's the challenge is how do you make it tasteful? You know, tasteful enough. You know exactly. Saying? You don't really gotta capture everybody, but tasteful enough. But that and that's the artist's challenge, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? That's what it is. Like that is the actual challenge. Yes, but how are you gonna make this tasteful? You can always do it, but how are you gonna make it tasteful because anybody can do it but is it tasteful right, <laughs> that's right, the thing right. and i and i actually love that i actually love that aspect because like i feel like that's the real challenge because yeah nobody wants to quote unquote listen to positive shit <laughs> but that's the challenge for the artist you right. know to make it like how can you make this catchy how can you make this like people want to fuck with this right and like i love that i love that aspect of it and like i said i'm not opposed to making like 
sadder music. But I, like I said, I understand the power and energy that it holds on you. Like sometimes you want to relate to that, but at a certain point, if you keep on, then that becomes like a default. You know what I'm saying? And then you're living in that internal hell. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like you're talking about. So um, I just want to give people a different taste. Like you know, what I'm just a little, you don't have to listen to it all the time, but just like you, so you have a different flavor in your um, <laughs> in your meal plan, kind of thing. <laughs> Bonnie says, just mix in the, with the gun sounds and, and exactly. anything works. <laughs> exactly. Anything Recycle. Works. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You got to add the ad words in there. There it is. Get, get, a, get um, what's it called? Migos to do the song and it's fine. <laughs> We gotta do it with the trash. Yeah, we gotta recycle the trash. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> After all of my aluminum. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Panda, panda, recycle that aluminum. Panda, panda. <laughs> oh, man. But hey, if you can do it tight, hey, you never know. In 20 years, we might have a bunch of people recycling the shit out of some cans and stuff because it's like, yo, exactly. back in the day, I used to listen to Josh Knight and he was always talking about <laughs> recycling and shit. And, you know, you know, I know Josh is like this. He's going through a divorce and he's like a triple billionaire. But like, you know, he started oh somewhere, bro. He started somewhere <laughs> and he inspired oh me to recycle. So you better That's recycle that shit and That's wear a condom. That's all I want. Please have two different cans <laughs> yeah. for recycling bins. <laughs> That's all I'm looking for. Is equality and recycling. Okay? That's it. Shit. Is that too Not much to ask? Gosh. Can we get a little bit of recycling? Oh, Josh. Do you hear that noise? I do. What is that? Sounds sounds like someone's dropping a beat. <laughs> <laughs> no, for the beat to drop. <laughs> it's actually time for how much does it cost on Craigslist? Okay, everybody, give us one second. We're gonna be playing for some prizes. Uh, well, it looks like we got more mask in, so we have a WSEG mask up for grabs. We have, we still have the Mike Berg porn porn hub patch, <laughs> uh, and the. Uh, let me see. We gotta get something. Well, I got these LA natives that don't, they don't work for Josh though. He's not an LA native. How about oh, how about the how about the Wilby shoes? One of these. Anybody the patch. Want? Yeah. These hey. are and these are all from our sponsor, uh, ModedStudios.com. ModedStudios.com mm. provides these patches. Y'all should go and check. Why do I not have a stupid thing from Moded yet? Do I? Let me see if I have a thing from Moded. No, I don't. Of course I don't. Okay, so uh, here I'm typing it in the chat. ModedStudios.com This is our sponsor. They have amazing patches and apparel. If you like the Wu-Tang Clan, go and check them out. You can get customizable Wu-Tang patches where you can put your favorite sports team, yeah. your country's flag, or your favorite design. Go to ModedStudios.com and check out their selection and uh, get into it, baby. They also have amazing... Oh, yeah. And thank you for dropping Josh's information as well. Go check out Josh and uh, follow him on Instagram and on YouTube. And, of course, I'm going to drop the other link, which is his Spotify link directly to his yeah. latest album, Scorpion in the Sun. And that also will link you to other albums by Josh. Give us one second, everybody. We are going to get set up and we'll be right back with how much does it cost on craigslist for your chance to win some patches and a mask stay tuned okay i gotta do that faster okay yes, we'll be right back all right man give me one second and uh we'll we'll uh, we'll be right back all right just give me one second all right no.
Alright. I just am terrible at doing things sometimes. <laughs> Alright guys, we're gonna come back. Uh, I wish we could play uh, the Spanish Flea, but I cannot do that anymore because we kept on getting too many DCMAs. So I'm looking for the stupid... Oh, here we go. So we'll, we'll just do this. All right, guys. We are coming back with how much does it cost on Craigslist? The only game in America where you get to bet on other people's Gosh. garbage uh, that they don't want anymore. And then uh, we're going to sort of uh, bet on that and see uh, who's closest. So uh, there's, uh, there's the whole intro to the game. Wow. Great. Awesome. That was terrible. Perfect. All right. So uh, the name of the game is How Much Does It Cost on Craigslist? And it's brought to you by ModedStudios.com. Go to ModedStudios.com and check out their amazing selection of patches and apparel, fully embroidered, made here in America, and uh, it, it ships everywhere in the world. All right. So uh, the it's kind of like the price is right, but you get to uh, you can go over in price. So it's whoever is closest to the actual price at the at the end of the day and uh once you say or write in chat your bet that's it no more all bets are off you get one shot so you don't get to change your bet so you can't just be like seeing what everybody else is betting and being like oh, okay well now i'm gonna bet up to that no it's not like that we ain't doing it like that oh and i forgot to add the um the the ticker the uh, our our cash app ticker uh, I'm up one dollar and seventy eight cents, everybody. Just so if you if you guys were wait, w just needing to know, up one oh one six to nine, feeling fine. Hey, to the moon. <laughs> to the moon. <laughs> Have you? Did you buy in, Josh? Uh, you know what? I actually like spent a dollar on some Doge. <laughs> <laughs> and why not? That was like fifty shares. <laughs> Right. <laughs> That's, okay. Oh, okay. okay. Well, we're into it now. All right. Uh, did you happen to see the price when I was clicking through, or no, I didn't. I didn't. Okay, good, good, good. All right. So we're gonna. I was clicking through on accident, and, I, and he might have seen some stuff, but it's okay. It's all right. Yeah, all, right. all right, guys. So you guys know the rules. We're getting into this. We're doing cash out now. You think so, Wooby? I don't think so. I think I'm gonna hold. I'm gonna. I'm on that Reddit thread real hard. So they're they're saying hold. So I'm gonna listen to them. Wooby, a scene of beauty. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Uh, Eleven point two foot by five foot Chinese cross stitch art. Sorry, everybody overseas. We are a feet people here in America. For sale is a large Chinese cross stitch art scene of instrument, chess, calligraphy, and painting. These are portraits of main of main female characters of the novel dream, novel dream of the red chamber as they are known as the 12 beauties of jingling and eight maids this art is a scene of beauties having party oh having a party in which some playing some playing instruments some playing chess some reading calligraphy book and uh paintings these four elements which are shown okay i'm not gonna read this whole stupid thing uh <laughs> here we go you it, it's them having fun there okay so um yeah so josh how yep. much do you think this item cost on craigslist ah, let me see going by the dimensions and that beautiful description that you read um <laughs> that i stammered through i'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna say I want to say 70 bucks. 70 US doll hairs from Josh. Okay, everybody, you know what to do. Drop your bids in the chat if you want to play for your chance to win a WSEG mask, uh, a, a, a Wallaby shoe, and or a Mike Berg Pornhub patch. I, I'm getting low, everybody, okay? on the patches i'm still waiting for our sponsor to send another shipment so please do that's a whopper that's right all right um all right you guys got until the end of this song right here so drop your bids go ahead drop them 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 drop Poor Sonic, you heard it here first. Is that it? Is that all you guys want to do? You just the three people want to play? All right, you guys got it. We're 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 moving forward then. All right, so here we go. So uh, uh, let's see how much this all costs. And of course, we need our drum roll, which is 
drum. Here we go. Actual retail price on Craigslist. Twenty. What thousand dollars? Whoa! Uh, Wooby, you won again, my friend. You've won again. What did he say? He said four hundred and eighty. Oh my god! <laughs> Wooby, you won again, my friend. Holy you won shit. again. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's a, it's a, it's a stitch, right? Like, isn't that what it is? Right. It's, it's a, it's a all so. handmade. Yeah. Jeez. Right near it. Yeah, very close. Very close, Wooby. Very close. Um, yeah, uh, maybe you met 480 pounds, which in U.S. dollars is $20,000. So you were right from the beginning. Interesting. So, there you go. Got it, yeah. All right, let's go on to the next one. It's, it's a stick up is what it is. All right. I don't know what that means. Uh, sometimes, sometimes your jokes just go right over my head, Wooby. Right over my head. I don't even know what's going on here. All right. Metal sculpture. Now, let's all gaze at this work of art here, which I'm not going to say it's not a work of art. Large metal artwork made of quartan steel, shaped and riveted. Uh, these artists, the artist has a permanent work similar to this installed at University of West Florida. So this is out Florida, everybody. Intended to be bolted into a concrete base outdoors. Uh, I have had it in storage for several years and would like to find a new owner and yard for it. I have more steel artwork, but this is the largest. Okay, so uh, there you go. There's the description. And so, Josh, how much does this item cost on Craigslist? Uh -huh. I am gonna say, I'm 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 gonna say I'm gonna say seventeen, seventeen thousand. Just going off the last one. <laughs> seventeen. I feel, I, feel like, I feel like this guy has like some connections with West Florida. He's like, hey, I've heard them some work, so. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I, uh, I'm, 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 I'm all with your logic there. So, and also, if you guys will notice, I have a little thing for Saucy Chicken Nugget. You go and follow Saucy Chicken Nugget. We're trying to get him to 50 so we can get him affiliate on uh, Twitch. All the money he makes from his affiliate will be going towards his college fund. So, uh, go and give Saucy Chicken Nugget if you haven't already. Go give Saucy Chicken Nugget a follow. And uh, uh, try to get him to the goal. He, we're trying to get this kid educated here, all right? So that's me and Saucy uh, is my son. We do our own gaming stream where we play, well, whatever Saucy wants to play, which is lately Poker Man all the time. So we're playing Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu a lot. So uh, come through. I'm actually starting to like the game a lot more. Um, I quite like that piece. Yeah, said no one. Yeah, I, I don't think it's very uh, attractive either. It's this rust bucket of a thing. Um, go ahead, everybody, drop your bids in the chat <laughs> who wants to participate. <coughs> Otherwise, I'll just be sending Josh a, a prize. <laughs> that's all that's it. <laughs> so, okay, you guys got until uh, the end of the song. Drop those bids, drop those bids, drop those, drop those, drop, 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 That is right. Sonic has perished. He has drowned. So you know what that means. It is time to... Okay. So we, we're we doing... Okay. Your favorite today. Hi, your favorite today. Nice to see you. I like your... Uh, what, why has everybody got those like weird badges now? Is that something new? I don't know what that is. What are those badges? It's a predicted badge. Oh, you get a badge for predictions. Oh, okay. Cool. Hi. Hola. Como esta? Um, bien, y tú? Uh, okay. Uh, let, let's uh, read through some of these. Uh, Rada, 17K for Josh. $800 for Rada Mystique. Wooby One said $11,534. Your favorite tonight said $5,000 and an hola. All right. Well, if that's all who's playing, then that's all who's playing today. Uh, let's go ahead and get our drum roll here. Actually, you know what? Let's do this first. I just feel like we, we haven't had one. <gasps> Thank you. Thank you, Nature Boy. I appreciate it. And then let's do this now. All right. Drum roll, please. Okay. We're going to do a drum roll. I don't think it. I, don't, I think I made it. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. There it goes. All right. 
actual retail price on Craigslist. Three thousand dollars. Okay, so who won that? Uh, your favorite today. Your favorite. No, wait. Yeah, yeah. Totally your favorite today. Okay, your favorite today. You know the rules. Uh, you can uh, pick the one that you want. Oh my God! I look what I did. <laughs> come, on, come on, Mike. All right. Uh, you you can. Uh, Oh, thank you. Thank you, Wooby, for that. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Your favorite today. Thank you for that, Woo. I appreciate it. Uh, so go ahead and let me know what you want. You get, you have the choice between the mask, the Pornhub, Mike Berg patch, or, oh, you want the guest to win? Okay. Or the Wilby shoe. So then uh, on this game, we give the option if they don't want the patch. Because sometimes some some people win, like, all the time. So sometimes they'll pass. <laughs> So like uh, they could so they they have chosen to give the gift to you, or to the prize to you Josh so uh, oh, again man. you Thanks have a so choice much. between WSEG Mike Berg porn a pe- uh, porn patch which was just another <laughs> my you get my own personal like, porn <laughs> yeah I could send you something really uh, personal if you want Josh <laughs> uh, and the, so you got this uh, uh, so so you don't have to make a decision right now but uh, yeah, yeah. but uh, you can just email me or shoot me a text or, or whatever of your address sure. and what you want and I will send that out oh thank you for those grundies I appreciate it. I always love it when men throw uh, panties in my chat I always do, yeah, I do. Uh, thank you for those claps mighty mighty I Sincerely appreciate it. You guys have been awesome. Let's go back to our guest and uh, and send him off with a proper goodbye. So give us one <laughs> second while we uh, tune back in here. And I'm not oh, going great. anywhere. I'm still here. I'm still here with you guys. No worries. We still love you. Uh, how do I get you out of there, though? Oh, yeah, there it is. There he is. All right. Let's, uh, let's bring Josh back to the foreground here boom saucy chicken nugget there he is all right josh thank you so much again for coming on the show i sincerely appreciate you being on here and and talking we um we went right at it so i i appreciate you getting in and 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 making it happen with me um can you tell people how to find you and what you got planned and uh all that good stuff yeah well, yeah, Mike. Thanks for having me. Um, no this worries. was really, actually, it was really amazing. Oh, um, thank you. Great uh, I didn't, didn't, um, didn't know. You know, actually, uh, I never know what conversations we're gonna have and I have with people. But I know uh, that we got to like reach certain corners that you know might not reach in like regular day to day conversations. But yeah, um, thank you. Y'all can find me on Instagram at Josh Knight Music, um, Twitter at Josh Knight Music. Uh, I'm on Spotify. I'm on all the DSPs. You can just search Josh Knight Music. Um, um, and then, like I said, the last work I just did is Scorpion and the Sun Road to Kemet. That's everywhere. Um, oh, if anybody's on Clubhouse, you could probably search me there, um, Josh Knight Music. You can chat it up about whatever, you know, just let me know. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, yeah, Clubhouse. I was like, what did he yeah. say? Clubhouse. Yeah, Clubhouse. It, it, Clubhouse. Clubhouse. I, Rain is into it. Great interview, Josh. Keep on nursing. Oh, go. awesome. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all. And um, I'll just be working on some singles here and there throughout the uh, throughout the year. And uh, I had to do have a couple of projects or one major project in mind. And I'm going to keep it to myself for now because I want to like, you know, I want to like manifest it. So yeah, um, and I'm going to I'm going to keep working on that. But uh I may or may not drop a couple projects this year, but definitely, um, definitely gonna, what's the word, um, work on singles and be putting out music. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I'm with it. I'm with it, man. Well, John, I appreciate it. Who are we raiding everybody? Someone tell me who to raid. Josh, I hope you don't mind if you, if you raid with us, we, uh, oh, the Andy brothers are on. Let's, uh, let's, ra- let's raid them. So Andy Brothers are our next guest. They are um, they uh, they are very nice young men uh, who are doing their thing. One oh nine should have took my advice. Oh 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 whatever. You know what? You know what? I was up two fifty. Now I'm 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 up sixty one cents. I'm still up. I'm still up, Wooby. I'm still up. We're still going. I'm still in the game. Hold, baby, hold. Okay, oh, guys. 
Hold the line, baby. Hold the line. Uh, uh, is that their link right now? No, that's not their link. Who's that? Are, are you telling me to raid them? Is that who you want me to raid? Because I'm definitely raiding and and the and endies. That that is for sure. All right, what, let's do this. Let's let's get out of here. I have to pee. <laughs> I'm sure Josh probably has the things to do in his life. All right, we're starting the raid. We're gonna be Wolf of Wall Street. You are not. You know what, Wooby? At least I. At least I. At least I. <laughs> threw... hey, we're not fucking leaving. <laughs> at least I threw my uh, my uh, my ring my uh, my hat in the ring. You know, I I, got, I threw my hat in the ring, and, and and this is where we're going. Um, okay, you know what? Actually, I have to use the restroom. I'm gonna actually go because I'm not I'm not doing well. So we're not gonna do a raid today, guys. We're just gonna go. I, I, we're... All right, guys. I. Uh... Josh, thank you so much. I appreciate you Thanks being here. And yeah. I will see you guys Friday with the end ND ND brothers. I, I was calling them the NB brothers, which is a very different term. Um, that is not applicable to any fine fellas. So all right, guys, we will see you next time on Friday at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And remember, Cypher Deluxe is coming. So if you have those bars, stop through. All